Aye. Opposed, no abstention, it carries. All right, under new business, presentation <coughs> IT study by Dr. Picard. First, I'd like to uh, apologize. I went through this several times, but as I was going through it again today, I found a couple of typos, and I wish to apologize um, that they exist. Um, as you can see from this, I've tried to identify uh, a variety of different things. Obviously, the, the town background, you folks know better than I the town background. But for anyone who might read this, um, I wanted to include that. I broke down the investigation after um, many, many hours of discussion with um, representatives of all your departments and even your support staff uh, into various departments and specific issues that were raised and how I would propose that they be addressed. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to start with the IT department itself. Uh, historically, it's my understanding that the IT department was, for all practical purposes, uh, in a silo arrangement. There was a lot of separation between the staff, separation that was based on their job duties, but in addition to that, separation that um, prevented them from really interacting and uh, sharing some responsibilities and at certainly sharing some knowledge. So to deal with this, it seems very logical that as you move forward that the new director, and you'll see later on I do recommend that you hire a director, uh, that this person has as a key responsibility to foster cohesiveness and collaboration within the department, but even more so uh, collaboration among department members in other departments. Uh, one of the things that I found in the discussions with people is for all practical purposes, uh, their concerns and issues were expressed, but uh, not always with everyone in the department. So therefore, this concept of silos continued. And the new IT director needs to overcome that and be more inclusive and at the same time collaborative with all of the various uh, departments in the community. The director needs to instill in the department that they are a service organization and that their clients are the people who work for the town and the town council. They need to understand that what their needs are need to be addressed. Now that has been done to an extent in the past but I felt that it was important to emphasize that in the future that everyone who works in the department needs to understand that their clients are the people who work in the town. Uh, that their department is not separate but rather uh, uh, an, assisted, uh, an assistance department uh, to the rest of the community and how it's able to perform its function. The second item that I addressed in the IT department is that the department needs a new director. Uh, this appeared uh, in some of my interviews with a variety of people. I have recommended to uh, the town manager and I'm recommending to you that John Novakowski be appointed to that position. And I r raised that because he has, and it's been demonstrated in interview after interview, the most intimate knowledge of not only this network and the IT services, but also issues associated with the network. I mean, I've had a number of discussions with John, and when I've raised things that other people have raised, he's aware of these things. 
So he has the background, he has the knowledge, and I'm suggesting that he needs to move forward as the new IT director. Part of the issue that uh, I'm going to address, uh, number three on the list here in the IT department is the use of backup exec, but it's really a software issue throughout the community. Uh, from my perspective, the software needs to be maintained and updated on a yearly basis. Uh, one of the things that I will talk about later on is the Microsoft subscription software program, which is a direct way of addressing the problem that is evident in the community, uh, in the town government, where some people are using XP, some people are using 7, some people are using Office 2003, some people are using 2007. Uh, there needs to be a consistency, and one way of achieving that is to make sure that whatever software you are using is in fact being maintained, meaning upgraded when appropriate. Uh, the current issue that exists also, also associated with backup is the capacity of the current backup system and the amount of data that you need to back up. Uh, this process needs to have some hardware with larger capacity, and I've suggested a couple of ways in uh, the report that you can transition uh, to this larger capacity uh, on a full-time basis. <coughs> One of the things that exists is the retention time. Currently, retention time seems to be approximately two weeks. Now, what that means is, essentially, if I created a file today and I was working for you, and for whatever reason, and I'm not saying that this would be the correct way of doing it, but for whatever reason that file gets deleted, in two weeks' time that file doesn't exist anywhere in your records. That's a problem. It's a problem for freedom of information. You have responsibilities as a town government to make sure that whatever is associated with town government is maintained. I'm suggesting to you that this policy needs to be changed. I'm recommending that you discuss this with the various members of the department uh, leadership, that you also discuss it with your town attorney, so that you are assured that whatever exists is going to be maintained. There is a high rate of backup, but one of the other issues that exist is that some files, not many, some files seem to be stored on local machines as opposed to a file server. Most of those files are synchronized to the file server. There's no guarantees, however, and the Freedom of Information Commission is not interested in, oh, we almost got it right, they're interested in making sure that whatever records exist are, in fact, preserved. So <clears throat> that's an issue that needs to be addressed, both the equipment itself as well as the policy of retention. In addition to that, there is no tracking program that exists. Time after time in the interviews, I was told, if we have a problem, we call John. Well, that's good, and you're calling somebody who has knowledge of the issue and how to resolve it. There are two issues with that. One, he's only one person, and second of all, there's no documentation other than what exists in his mind. Uh, there's no tracking program where people would submit uh, work orders, I've got a problem with my computer, and those things would be prioritized and dealt with, and records would be maintained. If you're going to propose budget proposals in the future for equipment upgrades, you need to be able to demonstrate that there is specific need for it. Um, one of the things that uh, the town is exploring is a program that is referred to as the DUDE program. I'm familiar with parts of it from other places that I've actually worked. 
Uh, if this particular iteration of this program would work and follow uh, the tracking issues that would be necessary in IT, then I'd recommend that you move forward in that. If not, I would suggest that you look into another tracking program. On track is a very common one out there, but you need to maintain some kind of documentation as to what's been done to computer A, when and who did it, and what the issues were that were resolved so that if they keep on cropping up, you'll have a history as opposed to, oh, I remember working on that particular computer and we dealt with X. Panologic cubes, big deal, big deal. At the time, the vendor, I'm sure, was promoting the Panologic cube as a way of saving money. And in a terminal environment, it in fact does. You run software on the servers, and the only thing that the person at the desktop really needs is to have access to the server, and the program runs on the server and just displays what's running on your screen. The Panologic cubes don't work as well as everybody anticipated. They are being replaced slowly by HP terminals, and I'm suggesting that that process be speeded up to get rid of all the Panologic cubes. And in addition to that, I think that you really do need to take a look at who gets one, a terminal, or who gets a workstation. Rather than simply replacing all of the current terminals with new terminals, in other words, getting rid of the Panologic cubes, let's evaluate whether or not person A actually can use one of those or whether or not person A, for whatever aspect of their job, would require a standalone workstation. Part of the difficulties that exist associated with logons is that while the servers, when they were purchased, were okay, they just don't have a sufficient amount of memory. And one of the discussion items that I've had with both John and the town manager is to increase the RAM, if possible, out of this budget. Because the issue of how long does it take me to get onto the system is a recurring issue uh, among all of the members in every department. So increasing the RAM on the servers would increase their capacity. They are proposing going to 144 gigabytes. Um, the servers are capable of 192, but this is the most uh, cost-effective way of addressing the issues of getting a server to be able to respond more quickly uh, to the needs of the users. Number 10 on page 3 of 21 is to replace the firewall. Uh, currently, you are anticipating going into the Nutmeg Network, which is the, the townside counterpart for uh, the Connecticut Education Network. That's a very positive thing, and I encourage that you continue to do so. It will increase Internet access speed dramatically. On top of that, it also will provide another layer of protection because the state is going to be protecting access to its network, which you're going to be on, as well. However, that does not, from my point of view, absolve the town of the need of putting in a more adequate firewall. Firewalls today can do any number of different things, including scan for viruses, trojans, uh, all sorts of malware, and at the same time can also protect against spam. Those things may or may not get through the state's security system, and you need to be able to take action locally. In most networks today, you use one particular brand of antivirus, as an example, running on your firewall, and your servers and workstations use a completely different product uh, on those particular machines. Now, I realize that all the vendors out there claim that they were 100 percent in taking viruses out, but in study after study, they're not. They're close, but they're not. 
And so therefore, having two different systems is one way of providing another level of protection and security within uh, the Rocky Hill network. <coughs> if I go on to um, number 11 on page 4, the network has switches that are antiquated, has some newer ones, but they also have some that are very antiquated. In fact, today you can't really buy a switch that is 10100. I don't know if you're familiar with those terms, but usually when you plug into your home router at home today, you are running, if you have an old router, at 100 megabits per second. If you have a newer router, you're running at gigabits per second. If you have a newer computer, you're running at gigabits per second. You've got switches that are running at 10100, and you have switches that are running at 10100, 1000. I'm suggesting to you that all those old switches and slower switches need to be replaced. On top of that, when you do begin to replace them, reposition the current higher speed switches uh, associated with some of the ports connected to the lower speed switches. Currently, there's a process in Rocky Hill where if I put a jack in the wall, then I expect to have that jack patched to a switch port, which means all I have to do is plug in a computer and I'm on the network. You don't need all those ports uh, at any one particular time. I'm not being critical of making sure that all of them are alive. There are all sorts of debates associated with IT professionals as to whether or not you should or you shouldn't. But the current policy is that that's what people want. If that's the case, then the ones that are actually being used need to be plugged into 10, 100, 1,000 ports so that you can take advantage of the higher speeds associated with these newer switches and the older ones just being phased out. In addition to that, um, you need to, from my pers perspective anyway, standardize on a particular brand. I am not here to promote a brand. When I mention a particular brand, it is because that's what you're currently using. And therefore, it makes sense to continue to do so because what you're currently using is a high quality product, specifically in terraces switches. That doesn't mean that there aren't other high quality products out there, but the Interesis switches need to replace the ancient Dells and, again, to eliminate all of those slower ports. I might point out that some of the computers that are running on the system are only capable of 10100. And that's because they're so old that they don't have the NIC cards, the network interface cards, to be able to connect at the higher 1000 speed. One of the other issues that comes up, number 13, is that the fiber connection that exists between the town hall and the police really can't support the bandwidth necessary. You currently run four servers in a cluster. Things are duplicated between the servers. And if one server is busy, you log on to another server. The servers, frankly, don't care which one you log on to. And the user really doesn't care which one they log on to because the data is duplicated. And therefore, whatever is available, I should be able to connect to. Well, the problem that exist is that the speed between the police, where there are two servers, and town hall, where there are two servers, the fiber connections are not up to snuff. They're old. Now, I've recommended in here, and this is an, an opinion. I, ha I was in a quandary as to which way to go. I made this recommendation of aggregating ports. It's a way of taking multiple ports on a switch and making the switch and the computers connected to it believe that it's only one. So if I connect, as an example, two one-gig ports, I now have two-gig in bandwidth. 
There are some issues associated with that. The long-term proposal, as you can see from the report, is to replace the fiber. The most ideal situation is to replace it now. That way you can put in fiber that is capable of 10 gigs and beyond. Because in 10 years, 10 gigs are going to be viewed as slow. Because people will be using 40, 100, and even faster gigabit speed connections. And the demands on your network are going to increase. So you can do one of those two things, but eventually you have to replace that fiber. The fiber is not capable of serving you in the future. One of the other things is that the police department um, specifically, and I, I will address issues in the police department, but this one really falls into clearly IT, and that's wireless access. You have wireless access throughout this building. You do not have wireless access in the police department. So therefore, human resources also doesn't have um, wireless access. That needs to be done. It's my understanding that the money that was appropriated at some past time was used for something else. I don't know. I don't care. But the issue that exists is that to have a building like that without wireless access so that people can connect laptops, cell phones, etc., is, in my estimation, a problem. In addition to that, um, it would resolve some of the issues associated with the human resources department. Number 15 on page 5. I've mentioned this to you before, and one of the council members in response to me as a result of that last meeting addressed it as well. You need to shut off the water in the server room in this building. You need to have fire suppression, but you have to remove the sprinklers. I have no idea why it was designed that way, but if you want to replace all of your equipment, which could cost you an unbelievable amount of money, then all you need to do is to have a fire break out. Remember, these are machines. They're mechanical devices and electronic devices. Everything wears out. Fans go. They start to smoke. I've seen computers suddenly pop, and all you have is smoke coming out of them. So you need to make sure that you're replacing the uh, fire suppression system with something like Halon or another dry uh, product. Disaster recovery plan. I asked about this. Everybody says it exists, but I really don't know, um, and people frankly couldn't tell me, how long it's been since it was reviewed, revised, tabletopped. Tabletop is just laying it out and saying, what is your responsibility? What's your responsibility? How do we do this? How do you do that? Those are the issues that need to be done on a regular basis. I know that most communities don't have emergencies that would necessitate using a plan, but you want to make sure you have it, and you want to make sure that it's up to date, and that it's comprehensive, and that it's been tested. Um, number 17, the website. Time after time, people suggested to me that they don't necessarily have a problem with the website per se, other than it takes time to have it put up, and in many instances, the items that they want put up are not put up in a manner that they want to present to the community. So therefore, my recommendation to you is that you accomplish two things. One, you get a website system, not just a person or two people, but a system. And that system would enable you to distribute the management among the various departments. So if the town clerk needs to put something out, someone in the town clerk can do it. And it's not difficult. These systems are virtually foolproof. Yet you have the option of being able to design it, to accomplish your task, at the same time put out your material in a manner that you would like it put out. 
as opposed to giving it to someone else who will make those decisions for you. <clears throat> I have a preference, but I'm not going to raise anything. I mean, if people want to ask what I would like uh, or which ones I recommend, um, I'd be more than happy to do that, but my role here is not to promote a particular brand, uh, et cetera. Training, 18 uh, on page number five. There really isn't a training program. Uh, there isn't a training program for IT. There isn't a training program when you hand out new software for uh, staff. Um, there are some training courses that have occurred on a catch-as-catch-can basis. Uh, the community center puts on some and has in the past, but nobody has sat down and really considered the issue of making sure that everybody that works for you is properly trained in all the new software. And again, as I said to you the last time I met with you, the people that I have encountered working for this community are really dedicated to doing the best job they possibly can. And some of them were reluctant to raise negatives with me, but um, I sort of pushed because I needed to know what the problems were and training came out again and again and again and again and again. And you need that to have that addressed. In addition to that, as I looked at one of the um, uh, purchase orders, the purchase order for a new machine was calling for a 32-bit operating system. All the <coughs> machines that are sold today are 64-bit. Now, I do recognize, and I've said it in my report, that in specific instances, you may have a piece of software that won't run adequately on a 64-bit operating system. And therefore, you might have to order a 32-bit operating system. But the reality is that you're slowing machines down by using 32-bit versus 64-bit, especially when all the new computers are built almost exclusively with 64-bit operating um, chips, excuse me. Uh, number 20 seems to have been resolved. Um, I recommended, you got old hard drives. I mean, th the first time I showed up here, there was a stack about that high, this wide, and about that deep of old hard drives out of old equipment. You can't take that to the dump. Because as soon as you dump it, it's public record. It's public property. Anybody can do anything with it. You have to destroy the, the data. And it's my understanding that those hard drives are now gone, that someone in another department was uh, uh, contracted to drill right through the platters so that the hard drives are no longer usable. And that's one way of dealing with it. Another one is what I talk about in the report, and that is a degaussing service that literally wipes the drive so that nothing can be read. Support staff, page six. They raised a variety of different issues, um, things that I've already talked about. I'm not going to go over them again. You can read about them. They're talking about um, boot up times. We can address those with equipment improvement. Uh, software causing frustrations. On page six, I recommend the Microsoft Software Subscription Program. Currently, what you do is you buy a PC with an operating system on it. You have a license for that operating system, which is correct. The problem that you run into is that's the only license you have. So if you bought a PC with a license for XP, you cannot install Windows 7 on it without buying Windows 7 because you have to have a license. The Microsoft subscription program allows you to pay a smaller rate every single year for all the PCs that you have and all the software that you're using and any upgrade that exists during that year, you can 
automatically put on any machine that you wish. It would address this issue of some using XP, some 7, some 2003, 2007. The also, the advantage is you don't have to because under this type of program, your licensing is backward compatible. So let's assume for a moment that you have this program. Right now, you have Windows 7. Windows 8 is what they're really selling, Microsoft. You get a license for Windows 8, but it's also a license for 7, and it's a license for XP. Not that I'm recommending that you install XP, because next month they're not going to support it, which means no security updates or, or anything like that. But it would enable you to make an informed <coughs> choice as to when you're going to move everybody simultaneously, <coughs> as opposed to, I can't send this to you because you're running an old uh, piece of software and you can't open up the file I'm sending you. And part of that can be overcome with some training, but again, there's no concerted training program. Um, replacement plan for equipment. People are complaining that their PCs are old. Uh, I'm recommending that you engage in a recycle program, meaning that you lease equipment for a four-year period, and at the end of that four-year period, you're constantly upgrading to more relevant machines. In the library, page seven. <coughs> when I talked to the folks in the library, they were really dedicated to providing as many tech opportunities to members of the town community. Because many people in the town community do not have uh, access, et cetera, to the internet, and therefore they use the library to do it. Unfortunately, when some Panologic cubes have been replaced here with new terminals, they get moved over to the library. So the issue there is that they really don't have as much of the newer equipment as is needed. So it really does have an impact on their ability to get them fixed, to be able to provide for um, the needs of the townspeople. The issue of replacing equipment on a regular basis avoids that. One of the things that I raise repetitively in the report is to develop a user's group. To actually have people sit down, staff, management, support staff, and talk about the issues that they're having with technology. How can technology help them do their jobs more effectively? To address issues like what do we need to upgrade? What do we need to address as a problem? That really doesn't occur right now, but I got to tell you, from all of the places that I've ever worked or been involved with, the people who are your support staff, they're the ones who really can tell you what the issues are, even more so than management, because they're the ones that are expected to deal with all of the things that management wants, but they're in the trenches, so to speak, dealing with things on a day-to-day -day basis. And from my perspective, they, they need to have uh, this issue resolved. Um, the problem – I'll get into the police, page 8, and I've said this to you before that currently you have, uh, by my count, uh, four, it's four or five, uh, officers who are doing part of their job managing IT. Now, you're never going to eliminate the police involvement in the implementation of IT completely, because these are the people who are dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the same time, you do need to recognize you're spending an awful lot of money to have people work on IT when if you hired someone 
who had some experience working with emergency services, police, fire, et cetera, and had them working in the IT department, that many of those issues would be resolved. So I've recommended that you hire someone sp with specific knowledge and background in emergency services to assist fire, police, EMS, et cetera. I've also recognized, again, that you need to have Wi-Fi because of the issues of security associated with Wi-Fi in the police environment. I'm suggesting that you use uh, an encryption system referred to as WPA2 Enterprise. That's not available to us at home, but on a network like this, it would be. It involves two authorizations and therefore added levels of security. The current radio system needs to be replaced. I don't know whether or not you received uh, this, but I did produce some additional copies. It's my error. Um, I didn't include it uh, in, in the report that I gave to the town manager. But I do have a report of radio failures that have occurred associated with the police. And I'd be more than happy to provide you with a copy if you uh, wish. But you need to replace the system. And in addition to that, it needs to be maintained, upgraded every single year, which means you have to pay a fee. Otherwise, you're just moving in the same direction that you currently are. And that is you have systems that eventually will be obsolete because they haven't been updated and upgraded because you haven't paid to have it done. And what you wind up with now is systems where you may need to go out on eBay to buy a piece of hardware to allow something to be fixed. And frankly, that's not the way I know you want the system to run. In addition to that, you need to replace the console system and again incorporate a yearly support program. Now, one of the things that you'll see in the budget page, as I'm sure you've already looked, is there's a huge cost associated with these two items. There are also ways of leasing this equipment, spreading out that cost over multiple years so that you can begin the process immediately to address real concerns that exist in the ability of the town to respond to emergency um, situations. Uh, you never know when some of this equipment, because of its age, is going to collapse. Uh, number five on page nine, 11 out of the 20 vehicles that are currently the police cruisers have laptops that are running 700 <laughs> megahertz computers. I gotta tell you, those are 15 years old if they're uh, a day. I mean, they haven't made 700 megahertz machines in a long, long time. Now, I realize that money may have been appropriated over the past years to upgrade those, but that money was used for some other emergency need that existed. Well, you've got a major issue right now in your police cruisers and the ability of your officers to be able to get the information that they need. Issues associated with uh, communication, cell phones uh, for detectives, command people, um, only for police business, uh, only for fire business, because the fire department talks about that too. The Panologic cubes, again, an issue, need to be replaced. Number eight, the downstairs closet in the police department where you have a lot of switches and one of the servers, First of all, it's small, and it's crowded with equipment that's antiquated that could be reduced significantly with newer equipment, and on top of that, it's not cooled properly. One of you, again, raised in response to the meeting that I had with you um, a couple of months ago, a concern associated with the cooling, and that needs to be addressed. You can't have this equipment running too hot. If it does, its lifespan is re reduced dramatically. Um, the issue also of uh, 
quotas was raised, meaning email quotas, storage quotas. Uh, I'm suggesting, I'm not making a judgment one way or the other, but I'm suggesting that a conversation be taken um, associated with this users group between uh, people who are in the IT department as well as the various departments as to what they need in regards to storage and email capacity. There also appears to be an issue as to whether or not the police are able to install uh, pieces of software because they don't have administrative rights. I'm not recommending that they be granted administrative rights, but I am recommending that a conversation take place between the IT department and the police on specific things as it relates to what is needed and therefore, again, communication, collaboration. Uh, again, the licensing issue for um, Microsoft, the Nutmeg Network. Um, I'm recommending that you can continue to implement the radio tower, radio system that are already in process. Uh, it will save some money as it relates to saving some telephone lines. It will save some money uh, as it relates to connecting to, as an example, the police, uh, the, the fire department uh, down the road here. Um, currently, Cox seems to have some problems with that particular connection and line. Um, eventually, those things could be resolved. Um, you have generators, but there's a time lag, and anything that's of critical nature, you really need to look at whether or not you're going to put an uninterrupted power supply. You need to review the batteries that currently exist, whether or not they need to be replaced. The uninterrupted power supply is not going to replace the generator. It's simply going to stay on, the computer's going to stay on because the batteries and the UPS will power it until the generator kicks in. Therefore, any work that you're dealing with won't be lost. That needs to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, let's see here. Again, I'm not interested in uh, going over a lot of stuff multiple times, but if we go to page 11, the tax collector, they wish to integrate, and I'm going to deal with number four because one, two, and three, to an extent, I've already dealt with. Uh, number four is they wish to include the point and pay system into the current website or with the new website to allow people to pay in um, taxes, etc., uh, across the internet. And one other thing that somebody said, uh, and I put it on number five. Um, IT would be improved if you could clone John Novakowski. Again, one person, you cannot run a department of this size, a network of this size, with only one knowledgeable person. Uh, the fire department, um, older machines, uh, they had a server there that they showed me that sometimes um, collapses. I haven't seen those kinds of servers in at least 10 years, at least 10 years, and it's still running there. Um, those things need to be evaluated and replaced, um, in that particular service case, replaced. Also, um, again, the policies as it relates to permissions in creating lists, that, that was an issue that they raised associated with email. Uh, again, having this conversation collaboration, cooperation, uh, to be able to establish a policy that will satisfy their needs. Um, on number eight, on page 12, their concerns are that they really don't have access to the firehouse program, which is what they use to track volunteers' uh, actions, activities, etc. And they need to be able to do that. 
um, again, sitting down and having a conversation to make whatever policy changes are necessary to facilitate their jobs. The assessor, um, they appear to be on more of a cutting edge as far as equipment is concerned than some of the other departments because of the software that they need to run on it. So therefore, they get newer equipment. Um, those things need to be part of a constant replacement system. Um, they also talked about the website issue, uh, their ability to put information presented in the way they wish to present it. And they would also like to be able to have uh, uh, some of their vendors have network access through a virtual private network access point. Finance director talked about the need of a director of IT and also concerns about uh, the website system. Town planning, website. Um, and some of the issues associated with having records available on the intranet within the Rocky Hill system. Uh, they also talk about field-based tablets. Uh, uh, I, again, I'm not trying to promote one or the other, Apple, Android, Windows. It really doesn't make any difference. It, what will work the best for what you need to do? Uh, keeping in mind that every time you incorporate something like this, you're dealing with issues associated with security as well. Um, printers. I believe that some of the printers are really old. Some can be replaced and you can focus on replacement in a more organized fashion and also with service companies that will be able to address them. Again, I have my preferences but I don't address what I believe you should do because there's more than enough choices out there. Um, the Parks and Rec in the Community Lab, specifically the Community Lab. It's a really great resource that you have here in Rocky Hill. But it really is based on goodwill. Goodwill associated with the director of the Community Lab and his ability to get companies to donate equipment. If you wish to continue that kind of a program, you need to incorporate that program so that there is a refresh rate in keeping with the rest of the community. Therefore, you can use that facility to help you train some of the people who work for you. Um, uh, talks about training and so forth. I'm not going to repeat other things that I've already talked about. The town engineer, page 16. Currently, they're using AutoCAD 2008. They're using AutoCAD 2008 because their equipment won't support the newer versions. It's just that simple. So they stop paying the support fees that would give them access to the newer version. Um, again, a replacement policy, a replacement system would take care of that issue in the long run. One of the issues that um, came up in the town engineer's department is their ability to load um, pictures, uh, specifically pictures of the community. Uh, that's an issue of uh, both equipment as well as the fact that some of that is loaded on local machines. File synchronization. So if I know I have it on this machine, I can't go to that machine to pull it up because I don't have any connection directly to that hard drive. It's not stored on my file server share, so I can't get access to it. That needs to be resolved. Uh, some people also raise the issue that they are concerned that JPEGs are not available to be inserted into email. 
Um, there are some reasons for that, but also this is an opportunity to sit down and say, why do you need them and how can we resolve to fix it so that you can do your job? That's really what it comes down to. Um, they also talk about having Android machines, either phones or devices, pads, so that they can run people forms, which is available to run on Androids. So ultimately, you may wind up with a system that has some Apple and some Android, and your IT department is going to have to support those at the same time providing a level of security. Town clerk, um, I mean, frankly, the town clerk's office, they just take care of everything. I mean, they're governed by statute, and they're very dedicated to making sure that they comply with the statute. So they use Iron Mountain as a storage facility. On top of that, um, they feel that they would like to have some staggered schedule for the IT staff so that if they come in early, there is no IT around. If they stay late, there's no IT around. You can either do that with a modified staggered schedule or some kind of rotating um, a system of on-call. So if I do have a problem, I know I can call someone to resolve it. Human services, again, Wi-Fi, um, equipment being replaced on a regular basis. Um, one of the things that came out on this is privacy. And I noticed it when I was in that particular department. In many instances, people who come to the window have some very specific personal things that they need to convey to this department. The equipment that they have in certain locations is so old that they can't use it effectively to enter this information. So therefore, they're interviewing people in an open area where other people, visitors as well as other staff members, can overhear some of what they're saying. That's, from my perspective, inappropriate. And the way to resolve that is to deal with equipment so that they can take people into a location where they'll be able to have some privacy and enter in the information into the records that would be necessary. I also address some of your concerns. I address those on page 19 and 20. Um, number five is backups, and while that is an issue, I want to emphasize to you that, that you have four servers that are running in a cluster, and the systems themselves are synchronized, and there are multiple copies of the data. They use what is euphemistically referred to as RAID 10. RAID 10 doesn't technically exist. It's RAID 0 and 1. And people flip it and say, we got RAID 10, and you only have RAID 5 or RAID 6 or whatever. But it's a combination of RAID 0 and RAID 1 to provide for speed as well as redundancy of the data. Um, a couple of people uh, indicated uh, the issues associated with files on C drives that were personal. Um, currently, from my point of view, it's your equipment and your staff shouldn't be putting anything personal on your equipment. It's just that simple. Because if they do, you have to back it up. That means you're spending money for adequate space, et cetera, et cetera. And that needs to be revisited, associated with all of your staff. It's not a critical issue that needs to be addressed immediately. But in this process of having a discussion, of working on some kind of a committee, uh, a user's group, this needs to be pointed out. The cost and proposals uh, I've included are 
estimates as well as some informed um, um, numbers. <coughs> um, they could be higher, they could be lower. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to spend some money that you haven't been spending on IT over the next several years. Uh, if you take that total at the bottom on the last page of 2149000 for the first year, and you take some of that and you lease it with a leasing organization because some companies, uh, in my discussions with the police, I asked them point blank whether or not Motorola would lease. And Motorola won't. But they do provide a yearly cost to maintain that equipment at whatever the current level is. So every year you're going to be paying them and that equipment would be upgraded and upgraded until it absolutely needs to be replaced. But there are ways of taking that initial cost and dividing that up over a period of three, four, or five years and reducing that initial cost. I apologize for taking so long, but I spent many hours in interviews and I wanted to address the issues and I hope I haven't forgotten anything. And uh, if I have, I apologize. Okay, before we get to questions, counselors want a three minute break or do you want to keep pushing forward? Keep going. We'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Let's, we'll start at this end, Chief. Any questions? Yeah. Um, Quite a few, as a matter of fact. Just a quick question. Laptop in police officers, cars, 700, whatever, whatever. Um, haven't seen them in 100 years. Not can they be upgraded? Can they? No. They can't. They got to be replaced. Replace them. Okay. Um, you say that uh, police officers, four to five uh, individuals equal one person. On no, IT. actually equal more than one person. So there's more the than one person time. doing IT work, and you recommend? That you hire someone who can deal with the vast majority of that. Okay. Therefore, the amount of time that police officers would be spending would be more advisory, as well as some maybe nitty-gritty issues that only they would, would need to address. Um, big corporations have uh, contracts with help desks. Yes, they do. Uh, what's your thoughts on those? The issue associated with help desks is where are they located? Obviously, how much are they going to cost? Um, but it's certainly a viable location, if a viable solution, I should say. If the location, however, is in a country where people speak English but not very clearly. Assuming that that's not the case. Yeah, then that's something that can be addressed. It's, it's a viable, it is a viable UTC way and the rest of the big corporations do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, in your, um, just a side comment here, you're saying the library has the oldest equipment? They have a lot of old equipment. I wouldn't say the absolute oldest, but they have a lot of they old equipment. They have a lot equipment. of it. Okay. Um, I was looking at the figures that you put down here as sure. far as year one, year two, year five. And uh, year one, or the current year, we could get away with $16,000, and that would put us close to what you're saying would be a good start, correct? Well, it would allow you to upgrade the memory. Yeah. And also, from my perspective, um, promote to a uh, technology director. And that's based on uh, the remaining months of this fiscal year. Okay. So that would be the 10000 Yeah. Uh, then we go on to year one, or whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, that one there is uh, $2,149,000, which um, that may not be totally true because I think the console and everything else uh, would be worth uh, $1.7 million with all the other things you got added in there because I believe that we've got money set aside for the radio already. Yeah, it's my understanding too. So that's, that figure is a little bit high. It is, but I wanted to present what I believe from my discussions with people the cost would be. How you fund it, right. that's your bailiwick. Correct. So then we get into, then we, we hire a, uh, an additional IT staff person, and we get a director at 85000 another one, and then we go to year three, we 
which would be 2016, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, that those that 85,000 times two doesn't get carried over into those other figures you got. So no, now, those are new dollars. That's right. Yeah. So a reoccurring forever and ever dollar would be $170,000 more Correct. onto the numbers that you have today. Yep. Okay, so that puts it a little bit more in perspective to me anyway. The, anytime you see money in any one of those years, it is representative of either how much you would need to spend each year or if you lease that equipment, what the probable cost would be in each of the years for either a four or a five year New leasing cost. system. New, New cost. cost. Right. Okay. We're presently running on um, multi mode. Uh, yes. We are. And there's a problem with that because they're not terminated or there were loss of signal. It, the, there are several qualities of multi-mode fiber mm -hmm. and they didn't put in the best quality. So therefore, there is a lot of loss of signal associated with bounce right. within the, uh, the fiber itself. So we bought a cheap piece of fiber. Yeah. All right. That's understandable yeah. also. So you're recommending we go um, single mode, single mode, with a higher quality single mode. Absolutely, and the equipment and to back it all up, would that need to be replaced to a higher grade too? Yes. Okay. And that's part is that of the in proposal. here for the twenty grand? Uh, it's probably going to be a little more than that, um, but at the time of these figures were produced, we didn't actually have a bid per se, but you do need to have two switches, one there, one here, capable of that kind of speed. Okay. I'm all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, town manager? Just before you go on, I did want to say something. If you take the cost on the sheet that was provided by Dr. Picard and remove the two police components, the console and the radio system, and you add the two f the fir this year and next year together, it's for a total of $265,418. I've met with John Nowakowski on several occasions, and what we've sent John off to do, because the IT budget for this year was frozen, as well as preparation of a proper IT budget for you next year, is John is to take all of those recommendations and show me what we can do this year and what we need to do next year out of the IT budget, taking the two major capital items out of there. Also, you need to know that we do have a retirement in the IT department that is pending as of Friday the 14th. We will be changing that to job description and we will be bringing on another technician um, so that we can fill one of the recommended positions with the staff we have by re redefining the job description. Um, as I redefine job descriptions or create new positions such as an IT director, I will be bringing the job description to you for approval. I just wanted to give you that information before you go on. Right. Well, th the reason I brought up the help desk which is used by many, many large corporations is that A, would address the after hours problem, right? And secondly, the, the baloney stuff that people get jammed up on could very well be handled with a phone call to a help desk operation and free a technician or I the agree. technician. Oh, I agree. From running back between the town port to port. You yes. Know? Yep. So that was the reason I asked and thank you. Councilor McDonald? Uh, sure, I mean, uh, I mean, we have probably 20 people in the audience. We have a lot of things on the agenda tonight. So, you know, I, what I'll do is I have dozens and dozens of questions, okay, for which I'm not going to go over tonight because I think that's not You're the more best. than welcome to send them to me. Well, I mean, I think we have and to. And I'll try to address them. Well, I, I, I'm not going to do that either. I, th I, think, I think what we have to do is from a council is to get a better understanding really what are the critical items we have to address. And one of the recommendations I'm going to ask the mayor tonight is to establish a technology committee. We have a lot of committees out there for, for the uh, ad hoc committees that come and go from the council. And I think given what I've read and what I understand, I think that's something that we can talk about down the road. We don't have to do it today, but I think it's just something to, to, uh, for us to think about. I would have a couple comments. I mean, I appreciate your compilation of your interviews and your discussions uh, and your qualitative assessment. I guess for me, what I struggled with is I would have hope the presentation would have and the materials would have been organized in a better manner for me to fully understand the issues. I mean, we have, when I go through your report, it's 109 issues, you know, 10 of which 
recommend hiring new staff. Well, that's not going to happen, okay? Just with the budget, set, budget situation we are, I don't think any of us here would just automatically hire more and more people. I, I don't think we're going to be doing that. I could be wrong. But, but I think what, what I'm trying to get at is of the 109 issues, I would have expected a, an executive summary. Maybe this is something we can even, you know, think about. Is this something we had thought we would be receiving and should we maybe ask Dr. Picard to come back to us at a later point? With more of first like an executive summary that would lay out really an IT, the IT overview. I mean, many of the counselors here are new to the council. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, your report does not give, at least it doesn't give me, a good understanding of what is the makeup of the IT organization within Rocky Hill. You know, the functions, the training, the systems, even then when we look at hardware, user profile, I mean, there's a lot of training. You can go through a list of some of the key components that your report was more laid out by, okay, I talked to Stu in assessment, in assessors, here's what I got from Stu. Or I talked to Lisa in Park and Rec, here's what I got from Lisa. I'm trying to get it at a higher level where I can flip it based on, you know, is it, is, is it security? Is it backup? Is it equipment? Some of the key components that transcend the entire town, not just individual. And, and I can't get that from, from your report. I, I, it also, uh, I, I'm, I'm, and more of the context around the IT function. And, you know, I've met with John. You know, he helped me with my iPad, and I appreciate that. But I've never, i got to tell you, I've had a lot of consultants in front of me. I've never, ever had a consultant make a recommendation to hire someone or promote someone, ever. And while I think we always have to look internally, the pool is more than just who we currently have. And I think the taxpayers would want to have the best qualified people in any position in our town. So, so I appreciate your qualitative assessments in, in your opinion, but, uh, but I think we really need to, to look at any department and making sure we have the best qualified people. I'm also, I know I talked to you once in the hallway, and I don't know if we followed up or not, but the, the external auditors that perform the audit on the financials and the town, they have an obligation to identify significant or even material control deficiencies. I mean, Guy would know this. From what I'm hearing, you know, from some of these issues, these are big issues that you've laid out to us. And for me, I'm really surprised when I read the auditor's report and that page is totally blank. Okay, so, so there's a disconnect to me between what the Bloom Shapiro audit firm that's looking at our organization here versus what I'm seeing here. I believe, and I'm really shocked by what I've read here, but, but I, I would like to maybe, I don't know if it's through Mr. Mayor, through the Finance Committee or through the Town Manager, but I would like to get the partner in charge of our accounting firm in front of us to tell us why over the years we've never seen any of these significant control deficiencies in front of us. To me, that's unacceptable. A and then, then when I hear you state publicly that we have major issues in police vehicles, that's alarming to me, okay? And the fact that I don't have a prioritized list for for a a any report I have, you know, we have hundreds, over 100 issues here. You know, obviously a town of our size can't address all of these overnight. What are the top 10? What are the things that we should be focused on? If it's, to me, it would be public safety, fire, public safety, uh, privacy, those types of issues, or, you know, some of the, um, the fact that we have sprinklers in, in a data center room, bizarre, right? So, so maybe those are some of the, some of the items that I think I had hoped to see, have seen in a report that would have laid more of that out, and I didn't see that at all. Um, the inventory, I mean, I don't have a flavor of the inventory we have. I don't have a flavor for the aging of it. I mean, you have, you have or the network speed, or it, it say it takes long to boot up. Well, what is long? So maybe if there's a way, I don't know if you have any quantitative data, I'd rather look at some quantitative data that you prepared based on your interviews. I think for me personally, that would be very helpful for me to better understand, you know, where are we and where are we going? I mean, the taxpayers pay $20,000 for this assessment in this town. So we need to make sure that we provide, you know, what are we gonna focus on? We can't focus on 109 issues. We have a budget coming up. We can't put $2 million into this, we just can't. We all know that. We have. You know, all day kindergarten, we have other items coming up. And until I can get a better understanding of what is the critical items 
that our expert that we engaged to come up with, I really, you know, I appreciate this and, and, and it's, it's good reading, but there's really, I don't think, any actionable items on my part. All set? Yep. Council Moriarty? Um, <clears throat> you know, you talk about a lot of stuff is antiquated and with electronics that could be in five years because of the update of, I mean, you talk about speed. I mean, we could have this conversation next week and there could be new stuff out there. In your, ex in, your, in your experience through this stuff, how often on a regular basis does this stuff need to be replaced? Computers, in my estimation, three to four years. If you go longer than that, you're asking for problems. Switches, routers, five years, maybe seven. When you get up to ten years, you're dealing with new services and <coughs> security features that may or may not work on your old equipment. Manufacturers provide upgrades all the time and in those upgrades they sometimes provide you new services. But you're still limited by the actual hardware itself and what it's capable of doing. All right, I mean it's, I mean they, they got the market because here, we're not going to upgrade it. You got to buy this stuff. I mean, it's they got you coming and going, yep. no matter what. Um, I mean, I've sitting going uh, on this is nine years now, and I know Frank has been up here the whole time with me, and Nadine and Kathy have been here. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, is news to us. You know, some of the stuff that we need and stuff, and it's kind of shocking, to be honest with you. You know, we we've sat up here, and I know sometimes with budget time stuff gets cut, this and that, but to see that. This is this stuff is in the condition that it's in, um, and like I say, we we make our decisions on up up here on information we get from town staff and department heads. You know, it is you don't believe? It. I think with the cruisers, and I think the chief is back there. I think basically the only time they got a computer in a cruiser is when a cruiser was purchased, correct? And she only got a new computer, and that was the computer's life expectancy of the cruiser. You know. Um, and that's like I said, that's that's never been addressed with us e either public safety or at the council that you know th these things need to be done. Um, you know, one way I, it is shocking, but in a way it's not because the way technology is. Um, and, and on the other hand, we're only talking one side of downside. I mean, who knows? Port of Ed. I mean, I th I'm sure they got more stuff than we got. So. All set. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Councilor Drapo. I have a few quick targeted questions. Sure. Focus on the first one is aimed at the through the mayor to the town manager. What is our current title of? Yeah. What is the current title of Mr. Nowakowski? I believe it's IT specialist. IT specialist. How long has he been with the town? He's been with the town twelve years. How many? Twelve. Okay. Ten to twelve years. John, twelve. Twelve. Yep. Second question has to do with. Replace desktops. You have forty thousand dollars budgeted over the next five years, or one, two, three, five years at forty thousand dollars a year. How much of these machines are you proposing that they cost a piece? Uh, th they're going to cost you roughly a thousand dollars. Okay, ballpark. I was, I was coming in at about eight hundred, so my numbers would have been at fifty a year over the next five years. You're looking at two hundred and fifty new machines over the next five years? Well, you've got about 200 desktops. And you're telling me, well, yeah, okay. And some of those are terminals, so there's a lower cost associated with those. Is it possible that some of these units that you're recommending could be uh, come, could be lower ca caliber machines that cost may possibly less than 1,000, like say 500, for based on their what their use could be? Yes, they could be. That's but enough. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, laptops for the cruisers. You have ten thousand a year over the next five years. How many? How many laptops are you thinking per year? Well, you have uh, eleven immediately that need to be addressed. Okay. So, but I'm suggesting that in a leasing system, that would be your cost on a yearly basis to replace all eleven. Okay. So ten thousand a year for eleven. So we'll be paying nine hundred dollars a year for a lease on a laptop. Well, you have other laptops as well, but um, yes. Okay. 
Uh, finally, uh, I, through the mayor to the town manager, I know we're not, this is just an analysis. I'm sure, Mr. Mayor, that the, the town manager can find $15,000 to get that fire suppression system immediately removed from, without any further ado. The first thing I will do is I've already, we will consult with the fire marshal, find out what we have, have to put in that uh, building, and then we'll go from there. I agree. I, at, le at the very least, shut the water off. Oh, no. Believe me, I will be consulting with the fire marshal tomorrow morning. Okay. That's all I have. Deputy Mayor Bell? Yes, I have many of the same questions that have been asked down this end of the table. I'm not going to repeat them. I guess I'm just, like, totally blown away that we are where we are. Um, when I was new on the council a couple of years ago, I sat here and listened how the panological cubes were going to solve all our problems and um, after an extensive array of questions we, we were told with all certainty that this was the way to go and um, I don't know I'm just floored by all this <laughs> so it. I'll just a little rest Move on along. floored okay uh, Councilor Vargas um, thank you for your report um, I guess, ditto, um, <laughs> and I, I guess I just, from your report, I, I'm, I'm not receiving much guidance, I think, to- Much what? I'm sorry, couldn't Much guidance as far as next steps in, in to what uh, Councilor uh, McDonald was saying. I really don't know where to go with this next. Um, I'm not sure, as Councillor Bell said, I was that was when I was first on the council and this panological cube presentation was presented. I was even on finance at that time and it was gonna be this wonderful thing over three years, it all worked, everything fine, we were able to do this. And you know, I'm relying on the expertise that's being presented to me as I'm relying on your expertise and I'm getting all of this information, there's a lot of words here, and then I look at the numbers at the end, and the numbers are alarming. Uh, some of the words that you used were alarming, and I just, I guess, maybe a little gun shy on when I hear words from experts, because I thought I was hearing words from an expert before, and who's to say that what, you know, I know you have to trust at some point, but I'm a little bit concerned as we do some of this stuff that it, we're going to be in the same situation. I, I, I'm just, I'm not sure where to go with this. And I am not someone that's very uh, computer savvy. I mean, I know how to turn things on and off and that type of thing. But as far as all of these switches and all that, I don't know. So I think I'm not sure if that's a discussion. I don't know how much the people on the council are very knowledgeable on all of this nuts and bolts either as to where we go with this. So that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know. We are approaching budget. I know this was a big thing, the $20,000. We are waiting on this study to see how this is going to fit into the budget. Um, I, I think we have to do something. I don't know what, and that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, town manager. I just want if you, you know, those of you who are really um, distraught over the fact that we bought the Panologic Cubes. We are not replacing the Panologic Cubes <coughs> with full computers. Panologic is no longer in business. We are replacing those cubes that are now worn with Hewlett Packard cubes. So we are still keeping the cubes, but we are going to a different brand because Panologic is no longer in business as we replace them. And, and the reports I, that people gave me were that they do work better than the Panologic. Yes, and that's it. But we're staying with the cube system and that, that virtual network that you did approve. Okay. Councilor Zepp. The, the first thing I looked at, of course, was the dollars and cents. Sorry, Frank. It's, it's a piece the of cake. Was, was entertaining. It's <laughs> a piece of cake when if you've got the money to do it, you can fix it. I'm confused on the cubes. <coughs> I thought they were the cat's meow and <laughs> anyway, um, I do support creating a committee to assist the town manager in wrestling this dinosaur that we have here so we can get this into a, a situation where we have a best IT program for the town. 
I'm not going to repeat everything that's been said. The report's an eye opener. Thank you very much. It's to me, it's a, a, a beginning point, a starting point for the work that we have to do. And I even think we should sit down and discuss the makeup of the committee, if it's going to be members of the council, members of the uh, staff. But I believe the town manager needs some assistance in, in getting a hold of this for future council purposes on how to handle this going forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Casasanta. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you, Dr. Picard, for your report. Um, I'm not going to reiterate uh, the questions that have been already posed. They were very, very valuable questions, and I appreciate that. My only concern is that, and I'm just going to say that um, as we, and I'm going to just echo what Councilor Vargas said, we are approaching budget season. Um, and while I, I, I respect the fact that you went to every single department and interviewed them, um, I, again, would have preferred to see an outline, dollars and cents, where a more, spe more uh, specific so that we as counselors can go through it and say these are the priorities that we need to focus on. Having public safety be, uh, you know, it, it concerns me greatly, the, um, the deficit that they're facing in IT. Um, John Nowakowski is doing, you know, a great job. However, um, you know, there's some things in here. I'm wondering why they haven't been uh, why they haven't been fixed already. Uh, network software issues in terms of why someone's running XP, why someone's running Windows 7, um, or whatever. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying th those are in, those are tracking systems. I mean, yes, there's advanced ways to track problems, but there's also email. Are they just making phone calls? Are there? I mean, I'm not getting, you know, a, a concise. Uh, uh, reason why these haven't been resolved. So I want to thank you for your report. Um, I echo my fellow counselors what they said. So I'm just going to thank you and leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple things. As part of your study in which you were hired before I was on the council, could you forward some of the answers to those questions to us? Uh, as far as an executive summary, as um, Bill has <coughs> indicated, yeah, I can work on that. Yep. Okay. Um, and I just have a couple more things. The well, first of all, the police department. Um, you know, a town employee who has to reboot a computer, it's very annoying and it seems like a waste of time, but when the police department or the fire department goes out to an emergency and needs to know hazards and needs to know about warrants and past history, weapons in a home, and their computer goes down or the fire department goes somewhere and needs to know if there's certain chemicals or agents, incendiaries in the home or business, um, I find that unacceptable. And as mayor of Rocky Hill, if you guys in the future, God willing, we're all still here, would come forward and please tell us so it doesn't go this long into the future with computers that are operating on 700 megahertz or that come with police cars as a free gift or something like that. We need this information as the council, especially in budget time. Um, I'm sure the ambulance has computers too. But all the emergency service is very important that we protect the people of Rocky Hill. Thank you. Oh, Council Moriarty. Um, to the mayor, to the town manager, to um, Jim Salmi back there. Jim, could you do me a favor and look at the specs and the drawings for this building? Because um, I still say, I, I almost, and if I had a ladder, I'd check it tonight. I was, I'm almost positive that that's galvanized pipe up there for that sprinkler system in that area. Now, if it was pulled out and it was, should have been in there, I want to know why, because I sat on a building committee at then and we did not pull it out. Um, and just so you know, and I'm not, the water won't be shut off tomorrow because it'll be for the whole building. I know the fire marshal let that happen, but we're going to have to come up <laughs> to shut it off. We're going we're gonna to have to put something in there first. I mean, that's the thing. But I, I would like to see if that was part of the original bids and specs of this project, and if they were, and nobody on this building committee or at that time the government rights committee was aware they were pulled out i'd like to call a contractor and did it and ask them why it's not there i agree with that <laughs> somebody Same. has to answer for what they've done well and they, they may they may have been told that you know i'm not i'm not throwing anything at the contractor but somebody told them to take it out if, if they did but it never came before any committee that i sat on we have to we can check notes and stuff you know i agree so, but I'm almost positive from through walkthroughs that I remember that that was, and I could be wrong. I mean, I could be wrong, but you're, we're talking about 10, 12 years now. So. Well, typically a reputable contractor likes to correct any errors. 
Save the local contract. You did it. Anyone else have any questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll prepare what you've uh, asked. If you have anything else that you would like included, please send them to Jess and she can forward them to me. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for you. your Thank attention you. and I apologize for taking so long. Thank you. Okay. Once again, the council want a three minute break or push forward? <laughs>